one boom we are live ladies and gentlemen for a new episode of the electric podcast i'm fred lambert your host and as usual i'm joined by set Wintraub. how are you doing this week set i'm good all right um quick thanks to our sponsor electrify america for sponsoring the show again this week we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit more to say about them later on on this show but let's dive into the news starting with um our exclusive post last night about the model 3 refresh and yes ladies and gentlemen we are calling it a refresh um i know enon won't like that but i think that's why you're doing it <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't say that but i think industry wise like most people would call that a refresh so i think you for should, most people we should call it the 2021 model 3. yes because what i'm hearing right now too and like i didn't get a full vin confirmation just yet but it sounds like there are 2021 uh, vehicles too officially uh we know that tesla for a long time they just uh, but, and, and still today they, they, they implement whatever upgrade they have whenever it's ready um they don't wait for a model year but last year and, and normally their model year change is when there's an actual new year like like it would normally be though it's not in the industry in the industry they they can do a model year, model year cheer, uh, change i think in october and they start delivering the 20 the the new year car way before the end of the year tesla didn't used to do that until last year last year they did that for the first time they had uh, some cars uh, going out as 2020 models uh, i think as soon as october just and and now it looks like they're doing again this year and this year it just maybe coincidentally maybe not it match up with this uh, model 3 refresh so it's kind of fair to call it like a model 3 2021 uh refresh that's what we're calling it yeah the 2021 we're, model 3. yeah we, we, we're going with it we're running with it let's um so let's dive in so if you've been following uh we, we've been reporting on the rumors on those for, for a while and the, the last one was coming out of china that had a, a whole list of features that tesla was updating the car with and uh, we were able to visually confirm some of those in pictures that were sent to us. However, the person we sent us the picture didn't want it to be shared, so we didn't. Uh, but I saw them, and I can confirm to you a, a bunch of new things. I think that the biggest one is the um, uh, center console that uh, most people would want, want to know about. So on the left here, you can see the well, they are both my current Model 3 center console. The, the one on the right is just some very uh, crude, like, to your whole <laughs> drawing of uh, what it looks like. But the, the the Model 3 center console, the current one, is like one big piece, really, uh, with three different sections in it. Uh, the new one almost looks looks like two pieces. Um, you have the, the and one constitutes the section with the, the charger, the phone charger in it, and then you have the two other ones. So the, uh, the, the letter, the, well, it's fake letter, like letterette or whatever you want to call it, sorts uh, of wrap around the uh, the charger and it's it looks very smooth it looks very clean it's just it's just like its own part of the dash if you will and uh, the phone charger is integrated now uh, at least we I assume it's a phone charger like it looks like it but we didn't test it or anything like that just saw the picture and uh it's like a suede like um almost like maybe a alan kentra type of uh of material inside the charger it's still wrapped around with the full leather all around it like like on the current side of the of the existing center console and then why it looks like two different pieces is because of the trim here so you have a chrome trim that goes in the current version goes all the way through now this time is it wraps around uh the the center console here and the center section where you have your storage instead of being like the current one that just flips open you know and it's super flimsy to you have to you click on it and everything now it's a sliding one and just you have a little handle and it just slides open like the the model the one in the model s and the model three so that's a positive change in my opinion also these um cup holder here they are a little further up they are closer to the the section that opens up and they don't have that chrome trim around them so it looks cleaner too it looks like a cleaner and the biggest change in my opinion, which I mean, doesn't see here because I uh, I wrap my Model 3 center console, but the new center console doesn't have this glossy piano black finish. It's a it's a, a matte finish, I, I would say. Um, yeah, probably it's, it's tough to see with the pictures, but 
looks like a definitely not as glossy as the current one that that's in the mold three and mold uh, Y. Other changes. What are the other changes? Uh, you, we can confirm too that um, they have this double pane windows now. Um, looks a lot thicker. Looks like two two pieces of glass and something in the middle of it. Pro probably I'm not an expert in glass. I wanted to actually find an expert in glass. If anyone knows one, <laughs> to, uh, can reach out to me. I, uh, I wanted to talk to them about that because it, it, it looks to me like it's a laminated piece of glass. Uh, which of course is going to do great for isolation, both for the elements uh, outside the vehicle and also for noise reduction. Um, so that that's uh, that's very good. It was a sort of a weak point for the, for, for Model Three. The upholstery on the ceiling of the car on the upper side of the of the vehicle also looked darker. Uh, again, I just saw that picture, so it's it's hard to tell exactly, but it looks like a new material that it's a tiny bit darker. What else? Oh yeah, the power trunk confirm. I saw the picture of it. Now the new Model Three is being produced with a, um, a power gate on the on the trunk, so that's that's useful. So do you think do you think that'll be an option, or do you think it'll be standard? Looks standard to me. I would I would assume it is. All right. Um, then on the outside, no surprise, the Chrome delete on the Model Y uh, comes to the Model Three too. So no no big surprise there. Um, that's um, uh, that's about it for what we can visually confirm. Of course, that's all things that were also mentioned in the rumor uh, from China. And uh, in that rumor from China, there was also a mention of the steering wheel change. I didn't see that, but again, maybe it didn't look close enough when the pictures weren't very good of the steering wheel. Um, there was, of course, the e pump coming to the Model 3. That was in the, the rumor in China. So I couldn't visually confirm that, of course. But if they were right about everything else, it would make sense that they would also have the heat pump. So I'm feeling more confident now than ever, than more than, more than ever, that the new Model 3 will get the heat pump. But I cannot say for sure. So. Yeah, and that's a big deal, especially right now, because winter is coming and uh, the Octavalve heat pump on the Model Y is supposed to allow it to run pretty close to the same uh, range in the wintertime as it does in the summertime. Mm. Yeah, and also I think it's a big deal for Tesla at this point. They kind of have to do it because I think since the Model Y came out, uh, I think that affected Model 3 cells. Like people are like, sure. I, want, I want a heat pump too. If you're making one in the Model Y, make one in the Model 3. So I think a lot of people have been um waiting for that for, to place our order in model three i know a, a friend of mine just placed his order and he was trying to time it with the release of the eat pump which i uh, was thinking was going to be an announced maybe in the battery day it wasn't but now with the upgrade we've been hearing for a while um went went in with the order so uh, i think there's a lot of people in this situation and the, that's like cannot blame the rumors for that one because I mean they, they released it in the Model Y, so people are like, "Hey, all right, I, I mean, bring that to the Model Three too." So, right, and also the China rumor came out. I would say mm -hmm. so. Some people in the the uh, comments are asking, "Do you think you should buy one now?" Um, let's see who says. Uh, How long should I wait to order Model Three? John Fell from Facebook says to ensure receiving the refresh. I mean, you can order it now. Um, and then by the time it comes to, you know, your, your place, theoretically the update will have happened. And if it doesn't, you know, what's going to happen. So you can just refuse delivery on that particular mm -hmm. one and say, yeah, I'm just waiting for the, the next one. Yeah. So yeah. there's no harm in putting in an order. And now you'll probably get the one you want, mm -hmm. um, with all the updates. But if you don't, you don't, you're not stuck with whatever you're just putting down a deposit that you can get back so um yeah by all means make a purchase yeah because tesla is known sometimes if even if you place a new custom order if it match an inventory vehicle that is new they're going to just try to match the vin number to that um uh, but right. uh, other than that if the cargo if it's a new car going production now I think you're safe because we, we we know that the cars are coming off the line. We just don't know like some there's a transition period, of course, and and sometimes like it might be not all the cars. We don't know they start maybe with just one configuration. Also, I think they're gonna just ship maybe ship a bunch of cars like so that 
um, if Tesla like ship just a new shipment, it's all the new cars to one market, but and then no one complains in the market because all, all the pe people, new people getting cars in that market are all getting a new car. So there, there might be something like that going on too. The other question is like, if you like the uh, Chrome and you don't like the uh, Chrome delete mm -hmm. and you ordered a Chrome one theoretically right now, and by the time you got your car, it had the black, what, what, like what's Tesla going to do for you in that case? Yeah, that that is certainly a weird way for Tesla to end all things on that because if you go to the configurator right now, or at least I, I went on it this morning, unless it was has been updated since, you get the Chrome in the configurator, so you configure your car as is. So I don't know, but at the same time, if you get all the new features too, um, then do you can you complain that much? Like it's it's hard it's hard to say. Uh, speaking of new feature, so there's one thing that I cannot confirm. It's a suspicion right now, and, and it could be interesting. It's the fact that because of the two-piece center console now that I'm talking about, uh, the we know that the current one, you can just flip the charger open and access behind it, and that's where you can access your USB um, plugs, your USB ports, and that's where you can install your, your Tesla cam and, and, and sentry mode storage and all that stuff. And now this like i said it looks like one big piece it doesn't move looks movable at all and i saw a picture from with, with the the center section being open so I, I can see under it and it doesn't look like you can really access under the phone's charger section um so that means that tesla either move those ports somewhere else in the center console for you to install your your storage device for sentry mode and tesla cam or it means that it's been integrated, like the phone charger is being integrated for sure. Interesting. So that's that's going to be a big issue for companies like Jetta, who make those really awesome uh, Jetta hubs for yeah. the the Model Three and Model Y, um, and also like uh, you know like if if you're going to have all those video game ports and and USB storage for Tesla Cam, like how are you going to access that from from there? Yeah, they might still be there, just like very like hidden, hard to get to. Yeah, I don't know. So yeah, certainly Jada and other companies like that they will have to pivot to something else or just change a design or if it's not integrated, of course. Yeah, because if it is, then there's just no point of having so, a, a hub. So one last question: Do you think uh, Tesla is going to change the price at all? Good question. Yeah, I mean. Maybe they're saving like a Friday after the stock market closes to uh, drop the price or raise the price. Yeah, um, you, you, what, what you're thinking, it would be a, a raise or, or, or a decrease because I, I, I mean, don't know. Like They could raise it because it's, you know, better. The e pump is, def is definitely, yeah. Well, it's definitely a better car, if especially if the e pump. Like the, the rest, it's mostly aesthetic. I mean, the double pane glass is an improvement for sure. That's not aesthetic. It's, uh performance improvement the lift gate is nice yes and the lift gate is not necessarily cheap sometimes right. it's hundreds if not thousands of a thousand bucks for an option sometimes and when when you have cars that have the option or not aftermarket yeah yeah this, or, or aftermarket aftermarket is easily a thousand bucks um i don't think tesla ever had option to have it or not so we, we never had really a price from tesla for it but yeah uh I mean, price increase raise, raise the price or something yeah I don't know. Okay, I mean, maybe they, maybe they, they would feel confident enough to do a price increase. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked by it. But at the same time, they're talking they're trying to deliver a new record number of cars this quarter. So, uh, they, they, so I mean, but I mean, at the same time, they already like a few weeks into the quarter, so they already have a good idea of their order log. So we'll see. It's gonna be an interesting move for sure. I, I can't wait for um, when they're gonna announce or if even if they announce it i mean sometimes tesla just oh no it's on the it's on the configurator deal with it speaking on that delivery that they're trying to do uh, about delivery this is more about production elon sent out an email earlier this week about uh production and the uh, the email basically said that uh, he sees tesla having uh, a, a shot and achieving half a million vehicle produce uh, this year and uh, he, he says that it, it, it's going to require uh, pushing very hard in Q4. So they need to increase the input, the input, the output, sorry, in Q4. 
uh, while in parentheses increasing qual uh, quality. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I don't like that the quality is an afterthought here, sort of, sort of like being in parentheses. But all right, so it, it's very important here to differentiate the um, exiting output of Tesla in 2020 versus actually making 500,000 cars in 2020. Uh, because we know just based on the last earning that Tesla sorry, has the deployed capacity to produce over half a million cars. And technically, that's 690,000 cars. Um, but of course, Q2 happened, the COVID happened, shutdown of Fremont happened. That that really put a dent in the overall production capacity in 2020. So now, if we tally up all the um, cars Tesla produced in the first three quarters of the year, that adds up to 330,000 cars. So Tesla would need to produce 170,000 vehicles in Q4 alone. Uh, we know that Tesla had a record quarter for production last uh, quarter with 145,000 cars. So that's a almost 20% jump quarter over quarter. It's, it's a lot. I mean, for any kind of automaker, that's a lot. And for one that produces uh, over 100,000 cars per year, it's even more like it's significant. But it looks like Tesla could have the capacity there. They would just need to execute like perfectly in the quarter, or look over some of the quality issues and <laughs> yeah. cut some corners. Which, unfortunately, Tesla has been known to do in the past sometimes. So wait, where where are they at now? And in, in turn, you know, we're three quarters in. How many? How many have they sold? Sold or produce? I don't. Uh, produce, I didn't yeah, tell. We're, we're, we're three hundred and thirty thousand. Three thirty. So they need to get one seventy. Yeah. This quarter, which would be a record. Yeah. A record by twenty five uh, thousand right cars. So like that's. Uh, but I mean, Q4 was is just always, a, always their big quarter, though, right? Uh, for deliveries, yes. For deliveries, yes. For production, it's not exceptionally higher normally. Mm -hmm. uh, Unless there's new capacity being deployed, which which is the case here, like uh, we know that Fremont is with the Model Y, they're still ripping up Model Y, so that that would make a difference. Uh, some people have suggested that uh, maybe China, uh, Shanghai could, could make a difference because we know that the the timing of the Model Y production, they've been saying that it's going to be uh, early 2021, but with some great progress we've seen in China, the rapid deployment of new capacity there, they might they might be just conservative and, and surprise us with some Model Y production in, in at the end of the quarter. Um, I but I cannot see that being that significant. Like like five thousand units would be awesome. Like that would be great. So it it would help, but not that much. You still need to find those twenty more thousand somewhere else. All right, that was our biggest post of the week, so I figure we, we should discuss it on the podcast If uh, since there seemed to be very high interest on it. Uh, we reported that Tesla dissolved, disbanded its PR department. Um, we've discussed it in the podcast a little bit over the last few months, I guess. We were keep we keep saying, like, as a rumor, if you will, that, like, well, it's not a rumor. Like, Larry Tesla was not responding to any any reporter, any press inquiry. So we've been saying like Tesla is basically no working PR department right now, but we got a very good confirmation out of a high level, uh, of the, the record, level. yeah, highest level of the record that uh, it's indeed Tesla indeed doesn't have a press department at the moment, and no clear plan of changing that either. Yeah, the, the quote was Tesla dissolved the te the. Uh, no, no, that was me. That was me dissolved. Uh, we no longer have a PR department. Was the actual killed for? Okay. For a very, very high level Tesla executive. Uh, mm -hmm. And then what we reported, uh, of course, like Kili Solprezio. Solprezio. I will. I always had a tough time with Kili's last name. Uh, she she was the last known head of the department. She left uh, late last year. Uh, now she works for the Impossible Foods. Helen Helen Cooper, uh, longtime Tesla PR too, uh, transitioned to a new role of domain generation uh, this year. But uh, we learned this week uh, that he left last month, and then a bunch of other manager to Gina Antonini, Alexander Hingram, Daniel Meester. Uh, they all uh, left or transitioned to other position at Tesla that are not officially PR. I know that Gina's like, uh, their new role is like director of external relation and employee experience. So 
employee experience not really have to do with PR, but uh, external relations, you could argue. So, but, and, and I want to emphasize the point here because people took it like all different ways. And uh, a lot of so-called like uh, media experts were like, oh, this is the smartest move from Elon Musk and everything like this. You don't need press uh, PR people now. You don't need public relation. You don't need press relation because you have your own channels. You can just exploit your own channels instead. Of, and Tesla's huge YouTube channel, huge LinkedIn channel. Use, I agree with all that. But the issue here is not about like disseminating uh, Tesla's information, like we that that Tesla wants to be disseminated. Uh, we know that they can do that. They can certainly do that on their own, like with Elon's giant presence on Twitter, with Tesla's good presence on all social media except Facebook. You know, they hate Facebook. We are alive on Facebook now, by the way. <laughs> um, that's been new for the last few weeks. I don't know how it's going. I see a few few questions from YouTube, uh, from Facebook, at least. So it looks like some people are watching. Um, the 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 point here, and that's what we emphasize in the article, and all those media experts sort of overlooked it, is that Tesla is not responding at all to press inquiries. So, in 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 term of press relations, that was that was the main deal, and of course the press is gonna re is gonna report on things that Tesla wouldn't put out there. Okay. Whether it's like things that paints Tesla in a bad light, which sometimes is unfair, sometimes is fair, because Tesla sometimes do things that are not great, and or uh, just misinformation out there and things like that that are not reported. Normally, what what people in the press do is they, they're going to report on it, but they give Tesla the opportunity to comment on it so they can give their side of the story, so you have a better picture of the entire thing. But if Tesla is not responding to any press inquiries, it's not going to stop the press from, from writing about Tesla. Trust me, it won't. Tesla is just too big of an attraction. The press and the press works with clicks. Uh, so, so of course, they're going to keep reporting on it. We're going to keep reporting on it. But now that the, the, the only difference with Tesla not responding to press inquiries is that the, their side of the story won't be in there. That's That's the only difference here. And on Tesla's side, what's why are they doing that? Uh, it's it's not clear to me. Like, are they trying to save some money by not having a PR department? Like, I don't, I cannot imagine that's that much money. <laughs> like, Tesla had one of the smallest PR department in the world. Those people are well paid, I'm sure, but it's that it's not like it, it, it it's probably so small the budget they have that I don't think that can be like a monetary reason behind it. Uh, I have the thing that Elon just was like, screw it, I'm just gonna do it myself on Twitter, just do it on Twitter and like that. And that poses another problem in my opinion because, and we, we of course, we, we reported on that a few times now. Uh, we think there's a problem with the Tesla Twitter not being re representative on the entire Twitter community, being a more like unreasonable, I would say, uh, to be cautious with my words, uh, part of the community. Not all of them, of course, I'm sure there are plenty of reasonable people on, on, on Twitter that are fan of Tesla. But I think the ones that are more vocal, I mean, people that tweets like hundreds of times a day and they're more visible on the Tesla Twitter, I think they are a little bit uh, crazier. And no, I don't think they're a little bit crazier. I think they're completely crazy. <laughs> uh, but so, but the problem is they are extremely supportive of, no, that, that's not really the problem, but it, it's part of, the problem, the fact they are extremely supportive of Elon Musk and Elon responds to that because he sees it as like a useful thing against the attacks that he's taking on uh, different social media, including Twitter. Um, he sees it like as a counterpoint to that. But he, I, I think that creates a, a bubble around him that he's just he's just getting the feedback mostly from, from, from that group of people that won't give him the whole picture. They just won't. Um, the media is good for that, like good or bad. They, they do bad things too, but that least like you, you, you have to get your information from more than one sources. It just doesn't work like that. Just like we don't like say only, only read Electrek or something like that. Like get, get your sources for, for more than one thing. We try to be as fair as possible, but I don't know. Seth, you had 
even more experience than I have with with press and PR people and the media industry. What, what's your take on it? Yeah, so that it is very strange to uh, totally disband your PR department. I don't think I can think of any company that's done anything like that. Um, I'm trying to get into Elon's head here. Like, what is? Why would you do something like this? Is it to get like he hates the press so much that he's like, you know what? We're not going to talk to you. Everybody who talks to you, we're gonna. I'm gonna fire them all or change their jobs so nobody can talk to you, even if that you know. Uh, I mean, that's got to be it, right? That's what like he's so upset with the press that he's like, we're not going to talk to you, any of you, and we have no no reason to. I always find it difficult to try to like assume to, to what Elon <laughs> is thinking, <laughs> but I also don't see like like I said the other reason that I can see is like it, it's money. It's like less people like they they didn't fire everyone. They kept like uh, other people right on so, staff, but they but they put them to other roles so that can still save money and everything. So at the money aspect, it was an other thing, but I just I just can't see it though. All right, who who's the person who gets? Uh... Dan Neal at the Wall Street Journal, a Tesla to review, or you know, well, that MK. was Rich. That was literally Rich Hoto that I, we right. reported on, on. He was in charge of the press fleet, so he's the one who's doing it, and he's the one that was on the job the most recently. Like I think he, he changed his job position last month or something, okay. and uh, we know that like he, he did the he did the Jay Leno thing, he did the right. YouTubers thing too. So like the, the few things that Tesla still does with. Uh, I wouldn't call them like press, really. It was more like uh, influencers uh, type of deal. Right. And to be fair, like this is a trend that uh, we've seen in the industry ourselves, working with press people. A lot of people are moving in, in the press. They're trying to work more with influencers than they are with the press. Uh, but there's a balance, I think, for most people. Like Tesla now just threw that balance away. Like, just uh, let's just work with the influencers and screw the press. Right. And, and to be clear, it's not like a wide swath of influencers it's like super fan like mm -hmm. people who love tesla like uh if you've said anything bad about tesla in your whole mm -hmm. life uh like for instance mkbhd who is i think a very good U youtuber and is very fair he's obviously also a huge tesla fan but like his review was was not entirely positive on on the model y i mean well, not, I mean it sounded like i mean he was definitely mostly he, positive I said. he forgave some crazy stuff yeah like well yeah I, I would put it like that like uh you know his review came out like the week before i got my model y and i was like holy crap like <laughs> like his car is falling, falling apart and it's a press vehicle which like you would think like they would look at and maybe you know maybe this is reason why there's no press anymore but um i i was just like very surprised at how bad the car that uh, MKBHD mm -hmm. had uh, was and that he still was like very pro Tesla and very like this car is amazing. Yeah, uh, he's that, obviously a Tesla, a Tesla fan, that, that, that's right. for sure. But I think if I follow MKBHD for a long time and he has some kind of policy that he, he just most of the time he, he's just going to review things that he, that he likes already. Like sometimes he will pull the power of the video, like uh, being crit very critical of, of certain of a certain thing. But I think most of the time he just he's gonna just take the reviews for things that he's positive on it anyway. So that's why you mostly see positive things on channel. I mean, you cannot review everything too, and most of the time you want to review something that you find cool too. So right that so I'm not it's not a a slight at 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 uh, Marquez here. No, but yeah. I think the main the main issue too, if Elon was not satisfied with the PR department, uh, I mean. I don't agree with everyone. Like I had some of my issues with the PR department in the past, but I wouldn't put the blame on them though, because the, their their size again was so small compared to the coverage that they were trying to handle. And I remember, like when I first started, like in 2015, 2016, I started reporting on Tesla. I remember the the experience with the press department at Tesla was was a lot more similar to the the experience that we have with other automakers I don't know if you would say that some there were some exceptions but for the most part and it kind of devolved over the years as the coverage on Tesla exploded and the PR department grew as a fraction of the rate of the of the coverage and they just couldn't handle it anymore yeah and it was a weird uh, corporate setup too because mm -hmm. My understanding was, and I, I don't know if you can verify this, or maybe you even told mm -hmm. me this, 
um, they they had reported to the the chief legal guy, right? They did at some point when uh, it was Todd Marin on, on board. Right. Uh, I think after Todd left, it was Elon probably directly. Right, but it was it was a very but weird... also it was it was weird stuff going on too, like uh, like Tesla's PR department working with Elon on SpaceX stuff sometimes and on right. boring no sorry boring company stuff. I mean, which is not directly with Tesla. So it was used in, in, in weird ways to uh yeah the billing the billing for Elon and his like cross, you know, like foreign companies a private company, SpaceX is private, Tesla's public. Mm -hmm. Where do you where do you you know yeah. build, well I was I was when I brought that up with the person, the people involved, I was like, that's kind of weird, right? Like uh, and they were like, Oh, we're doing it for free. <laughs> <laughs> We do it like, but but we are doing it for free. But we you you can like that's cool for you. Okay, you want to do it for free, but you can do it for free because it's Elon. Because if you just want to do that for your friend's company for some reason, and you, you're not working for Tesla during that time, uh, I, I guess someone wouldn't be happy about that. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Elon doesn't own Tesla, so like, yeah, basically all the free work that the Tesla PR people are doing for the other Elon companies is not, you know, like. The Tesla shareholders theoretically are are allowing them to do that. So, mm -hmm. and I don't think, that, I mean, I'm sure it's a drop in the bucket, but it's it's still like from a accountability or accounting standpoint, it's got to be kind of a rough to. to yeah. But anyway, anyway, uh, I mean, to, to to like summarize the whole thing, I'm I'm kind of more like looking okay, what's what's going to be next now? Is is it going? Are they really going to leave it like that? Or and if they do, uh, what what that looks like? It's gonna look like, and and also I want to point out for like all the the super fans out there, they're like just like everything that Elon's done is so great, and including this move, you have to have some reservation about this here because this is undoubtedly like there's no doubt whatsoever it's gonna uh, result in a net decrease of accurate information about this still being produced, just no doubt because all the media that were dependent on press inquiries for uh, to Tesla to to correct their 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 uh, um, their, their their reports on, on Tesla loses that, and now that that misinformation is going to be out there. There's, there's just there's just no doubt about it. So that's a, a bad thing. And then the second bad thing is, of course, now you're completely dependent on, on Elon and, and and his Twitter, which is uh, uh, again, I think, has an issue around the people around it that. Are, are pushing for giving Tesla just a, not not a great picture, a perf, uh, representative picture of the Tesla community, and um, and especially also, the problems around it. It's a little egocentric, don't you think? Like, why do we have to go to his personal Twitter account mm -hmm. to get information about this company, which he is the CEO of and largest shareholder of? But it's not his company. There's mm -hmm. a lot of shareholders involved, and there's a lot of people involved. Like, why are we going to his personal thing to get information about this? Well, the argument thing? against that is that there's still the uh, investor relation department, which I don't think they can get rid of just for pure. Um, but also, we, we've seen some problem with that, too, <laughs> with right. with the uh, obvious uh, issues with the who got invited and we didn't for the shareholders meeting. Right. So. I just there's a weird way of disseminating information that I, I don't think I don't think will will be benefit uh, beneficial for Tesla long term. But yeah, in the meantime, free for all. Let's go. <laughs> just post everything. Governance is for suckers. <laughs> all right, what we have right. next here? Uh, let uh, let's do let, let, let let's do okay. a, a quick hattery real quick. Yeah. So again, uh, thank you uh, to Electrify America. Uh, this episode, like the last few episodes were is sponsored by electrify america um ea is the nation's largest coast-to-coast -coast electric vehicle charging network with stations every 70 miles on average along major highway routes and uh full of ultra fast 350 kilowatt chargers for capable electric vehicles they are dedicated to providing electric vehicle drivers with the speed security and freedom they deserve like freedom from range anxiety freedom from boredom as they wait too long for a charge and of course, the freedom of the open road. Even if that open road is just the one nearby, they believe in the electric future, just like you. If you're an electric vehicle driver or just wondering what it's like to be one, find out what they're up to at electrifyamerica.com. That's electrifyamerica.com. Electrify America, hello freedom. Hello 
freedom. Yeah, and uh, one more point on I want to say the whole thing is it has it, it comes back to the communication issue that was already everyone agreed that was of Tesla's biggest weakness, and now you you just eliminated one of Tesla's biggest communication arm <laughs> too. Right. So that that's not great. I mean, just just to give a personal example, just this week I had an issue with my Model S. The car um, gave us an, an alert that says that oh, if you stop, the car might not be able to start back up and sure enough my mother was driving it and when she stopped the car wasn't driving back up so what were you doing in that time you call roadside assistance roadside assistance terrible communication with them <laughs> they, they wouldn't uh they'll they say all right we give you a towing and then oh i cannot give you a towing because you're we we are in quebec and we we have to set it up with people that don't speak english and we don't have anyone that speak french right now I'm like, oh boy, all right. So uh, not I have even to do that. bilingual. And they they have apparently a French translation department. Like, well, uh, uh, he, he was trying to get me to send it to Montreal instead of Quebec because the car was like right between Montreal and Quebec City. And and but but Quebec City, the service center was able to take the car sooner than Montreal, uh. like two weeks sooner. So I want to let send it to Quebec City. It's it's a little bit closer and it's faster. But he's like, eh, Quebec City, all the towing companies speak French, so I cannot set up a, a towing with them. I'm like, oh, come on. They but, don't speak any English? Like, not, like yeah, I, well, uh, I don't know. That's what he said. Anyway, un peu, un petit peu. Now the, the 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 other problem too, and and that's an easy fix too. So uh, if anyone at Tesla is listening right now, like please look into that, because there there's the calendar appointment for the service. There's two speed for it. There's the regular calendar assessment, and there's also the always leave some uh, room, some time for for priorities for 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 cars that just shut down and everything like that. It's not it's not just a regular service that you have to perform on the car. That's there's two speed for that, but there's not that in the application even though they know that your car broke down because when i open the application to set up the service they prompt me right away with a hey, we just got an alert that your car is not starting uh is that why you want service i'm like yeah hey super that's that's awesome i'm like yes that's why i want it and then they're like okay in two weeks we can take your car i'm like you know already that the car is broken down. Like I cannot, like I'm not gonna wait here, even though I don't have towing too. So I'm not gonna. The car is gonna sit there for two weeks, waiting for you to pick it up and and um, thus do service on it. So I'm like, for a few hours we waited like that. I posted about it on Twitter about the situation. I don't know if that resulted in a, in a call, but I got a call a few hours later. From uh, fr from a Tesla service, and th then then the that that guy uh, took care of the whole situation pretty well, and and he admitted he, he said we have scheduled priority scheduled time set aside for the cars like that that are broken down and they're not regular service they they don't go in the in the schedule but he just couldn't do that, so that's a communication failure and I I think this the fix is easy here all you have to do is when you get those alerts that the car is broken down like they do like tesla's car are so connected that they can de detect that w when you do don't prompt pe people to take an appointment in the regular appointment uh just send it directly to a case manager that's gonna put it in the priority line to um I i'm not saying like fix it in a day or something like that that's not what i'm asking i'm just at least like take take care of it so that the car will be at the service center and looked at right away because it can take weeks after that before I get the car. Like I, ju I just, I just got a text earlier today from uh, their service manager, and it looks like it's the battery pack problem. So now it might take a few more days to to diagnose it completely, and then if it's that, and then order a new battery pack and all that stuff. So um, I, I don't expect to get my car back in a little while. Hmm. Did they give you a loaner? Yeah, they give. Uh, well, it's not. It's my car, but my parents are driving it, so my parents have a loaner right now. Apparently, a 2015 Model S. Oh, that's nice. It's an upgrade for them because yeah. <laughs> I, I loaned them my 2012 Model S. Um. All right. So uh, then, this one is. I mean, it's not that much news, but Elon confirmed it. We have a pretty good idea. That's what's going to happen. He confirmed that the new structural battery pack. Uh, is going to come first to the Model Y that's produced in Gigafactory Berlin. After the battery day, we, we kind of knew that was going to be a hit since 
a week before that, Elon sort of teased this uh, revolutionary like, st core structural design change that's going to happen at Gigafactory Shanghai. And then a few weeks later, he unveils this new structural battery uh, uh, system. If you don't remember, is that Tesla plans to produce the uh, rear hunter, the front and rear hunter body in, in just one big part each. And then instead of linking them through a chassis, they actually link them with a structural battery pack that we see here. But this this is a, these are the seat railing, right? Yeah, Looks the like seat it. railings on them too. Um, he did, however, had did some very interesting comments after that, after confirming that uh, that's something that we discussed uh, a few weeks ago when, when the, the, the system was first announced. What, what happens if there's a crash, if there's a, a problem and a repair at the chassis level? Um, Elon said that the crash absorption rails can be cut off and replaced with the bolted parts for collision repair. That sounds a little crazy to me. Yeah, it, it sounds extensive. I really hope that he didn't just threw that out there and like because I mean what I saw from Tesla fans when people were brought, brought up that question, which I think is a perfectly fair question because you you're making the battery pack a very essential part of the car, uh, a structural part of the car now, so it's doubly more important. And they were just saying, nah, that that's coming in a year, and a year from now Tesla is gonna have all autopilot, full self driving, and they're not gonna crash the cars. Hmm. Come on, like I hope that's the case, but chances are there's still gonna be some crashes. So that, yeah, that, and your car could be parked and somebody could run into it. Yes, that too. Oh no, no, the car's gonna detect that some car's gonna crash in it and start itself up and <laughs> try, drive away. <laughs> That'd be crazy. So yeah, um, but but I mean it, it's exciting that the uh, this change is going to happen pretty fast because Tesla plans to start production in, in July uh, 2021 of the Model Y in the um, Gigafactory Berlin. So, And, and so like, gonna... would insurance companies be okay with like just cutting off the thing and then bolting? What like... insurance company? You mean Tesla? Right. I guess. At Tesla's that point, gonna be... everyone's going to be on Tesla insurance too. Right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it doesn't like usually te the insurance companies if if uh, there's structural damage to the frame like that's a total car so like i don't know it just doesn't seem like it's as easy as as that tweet makes it out to be yeah i i agree that it's uh it's probably a extreme oversimplification of what they are actually do in case of a of a crash and structural damage but it is a bit worrying uh, i admit i mean I brought this up before. I'm always concerned about like what happens if like one or two or three cells go bad. Like that's they're all glued in there. It's all like one piece. Yeah, that's also an issue. Huh. Uh, we had an update on the Tesla solar roof this week. Um, it's uh, it's a bad bad news. Uh, like the the ramp up has been. Uh, pretty slow with the solar roof and we, we, we've been following a bunch of different projects to try to update you guys on on what's happening with the solar roof and i was very excited about this one this uh mr uh, paul stacy in florida reached out to me and they're like hey, hey, hey i'm getting a 24.3 kilowatt solar roof install on my house that's like the uh, biggest residential one i've ever heard of yeah, though I've just heard of one that would blow your mind. I need to follow up with the person who sent me an email today. I need to follow up with them, but they're talking about like uh, I, I thought I thought I thought they make a mistake. I think I think he said eighty nine kilowatt. I'm like that has to be a mistake unless your your house is like a a, a manor or something like a mansion. <laughs> but uh, this one twenty four point three was also a very big one, bigger than everything we've seen before. So I'm like, all right, let, let, please. Update me on your project so I, so I can at the end put the report for Electrac for readers to 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 look at and everything. So it started like thinking like oh, I'm gonna have a great post like highlighting the biggest solar roof project ever. Instead, I have a post that I have to put the negative headline on it, and the headline is not a negative spin. It's, it's just it's a truth. This the solar roof buyer left without a roof and tarps over his house after a two month long nightmare. So at first they told him it's going to take two weeks, like, it, like they say on the website. 
but then much closer to the start of installation, uh, they tell them, nah, it's going to probably be double that, four weeks. So he's like, okay, four weeks. I can indulge with four weeks of work on, on top of my house. All right. It's, like a, it's a big house. So week one starts. Everything looks normal. Some delay because of the weather. Then some delay because Tesla didn't have or the subcontractor that does the removal. And some uh, th there was some confusion here after my reporting. I, I think I clarified it. But Tesla does the installation of the roof here. Uh, the subcontractor was for the removal of the roof. And there wasn't actually any problem with the removal of the roof, the roof, the, the original roof. It was removed. Uh, then uh, it, it was uh, the third week, really, that uh, they actually started progress on the new roof. And uh, they did all the um, electrical power installation here. And then they started with the underlay of the roof and started putting some tiles on the roof. Um, but on week five, so you're already over on the week five of the two-week installation of the two week. That to be fair, they did warn that it was going to be four weeks closer to the start. So, but you already now pass all that, pass all the timeline. Now that's where things start getting crazy. Um, just I'm going to quote Stacy here, Paul Stacy. Monday did not start out well. We had rain over the weekend, and a few places inside the house felt the effect of it. Two of the seven areas were back to the uh, roofing removal, so they had to start back. Uh, as they found that this area, uh, they found those areas that were problematic and fixed them. It started raining and they stopped all works. Okay, that's not their fault. That's normal. The other area came down to a failure in Tesla's new lining. That's when you find out you're, you're one of the first homes to use it. Apparently, it's too thin and the clips that hold the boards together can come through them. And when it rains, water gets in. So exactly. at that point, what uh, the now they, they just like start back from scratch. They're like, all right, what's the issue exactly? Okay, this is the new lining. It's just that it's called the underlay that they place on the roof deck uh, before they place the actual tiles. And uh, over the next few weeks, what happens is Tesla tried to figure out a solution to try to make it work. And then Paul founds out that Tesla tried a new underlay on this roof and they went for a much much cheaper solution. They still used to use a, a double layered self-healing Firestone underlay that was apparently working very well, but it's um, more expensive, I assume. And they switch without proper testing with a single layer, much thinner underlay that was apparently self-healing, but they're not now, now it's apparently not so sure. And uh, that was the issue here. Uh, it's apparently it's not you shouldn't use that, especially not in Florida where you get a lot of rain uh, and a lot of strong wind and everything and damage or, or freaking with the, the elements. So now we are on week ten of of this whole situation. Well, actually, well, on, on week nine. That's when they decided, okay, let's start that from scratch. Basically, they remove it and they're removing everything down to the deck of the roof now. And so at week nine, he had no roof whatsoever and just tarps all over his roof. That what that's what that was his roof. And they, I don't know if you can see the guy's house, but it's it's a nice looking house and everything. Like this, <laughs> you have like this giant house and has like no roof on it for two months now and just a giant tarp on it. Uh, he came to an agreement with Tesla about it uh, to have some compensation of course for this this crazy craziness happening and uh, now on week 10 they're starting back from scratch with this um, agreement uh, he's not giving his roof for free uh, everyone like I, I, I he didn't want me to share the the compensation that he got from Tesla so I won't but let me just say that it's it, it's it's decent but it's not great like it's like um, I mean, if he gets his roof, if the roof is perfect after that and everything, and everything's good, great, it might be worth that two months nightmare, but it, it just that. Like, it's not like he's getting a free roof or anything like that. So, yeah, keep that in mind. And oh, also, the other thing, too, since I posted that, a lot of people reach out to me that have or solar roof projects, and a lot of them are in similar situations where Tesla really screwed up with, with, with the project, we're just trying new things. So, Keep that in mind. Like I know that a lot of people do have their roofs and they are very happy with it. So there's two sides to the, to the coin. That, that's for sure. But 
uh, there's a real feeling that you're kind of a beta tester with, with this whole thing. And that's not what I think everyone would want, beta testing a new product on their roof of their house. That's for most people, that's their biggest asset. So it's, 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 it's not like uh, at your own risk, really. I got a lot of uh, bad comments from the super fans on that one. Even some emails that were borderline uh, uh, death threats <laughs> after I posted that. Oh, uh, that was from this? I think so. There was not long after uh, the article came out that I, oh. I got it. So I assume that's related to that. Hmm. Other, otherwise, it's just <laughs> I don't know what else I did <laughs> to, to, to deserve that. Not that I deserve a dead thread for, for posting a negative article on Solar Roof, but you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I will say uh, Tesla installed power walls uh, for me twice uh, in two different states, and both turned out pretty good. So it's not all bad. I yeah. think uh, I think the power wall is a lot easier to install. Than a lot easier roof. to install, and I would also say I think a lot of these problems are with Tesla's roof, not Tesla installing solar panels on top oh, of. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like I wouldn't blame the employees that were on on, on Paul's thesis and installation or thing like that. Uh, I, I would I would blame it. Apparently, Tesla themselves, like uh, uh, from what I hear, like the the they really they really narrow it down to like, oh, we screwed up with going ahead with this on early without proper testing, uh, especially for, sorry, for um, Florida. And I had the other people reach out to me too that are currently uh, getting solar roof and it looks like they're getting a new order late too. It's not the same, it's not It's on the old one and it's not the one that Paul Stacy got. So it looks like Tesla is testing a few new ones. Like they don't want to be using the Firestone anymore. Well, it looks it's like. nice of Tesla to test uh, their their stuff on, on their customers. Yeah. I mean, at first they were testing it on the um, employees, but it looks like the employees got the good out there. Like, <laughs> they went, they went expensive with that one. Now Tesla wants to like cut the because the cost of it, which I get because it is expensive. They need to bring the cars down to make it work, but you, you just cannot go cheap with that stuff because because the, the the tiles well, Tesla is trying to compete with the tiles with with premium roofs. So if you want to do that, you, you have to have a premium roof yourself. And I mean, your tiles might be very premium, but you have to go everything premium. I mean, the Hyundai has to be premium too. Right. All right. Um, another attack on Tesla. Oh, where's my cursor here? Oh, right here. Um, Elon reported that, uh, not Elon, uh, sorry, Mr. Prescott, Mr. Hal Prescott, uh, the acting uh, general counsel at Tesla. Is he acting or not? Uh yeah, the exactly. vice president of legal and yeah, acting general counsel. Yeah, he sent out an email this week saying that last week or no, two weeks ago, uh, Tesla's infosec teams stopped malicious sabotage attack on Freeman Factory. Uh, they cut an employee trying to, to sabotage. Nothing, no details on what the sabotage entailed. And he said that. Uh, the employee tried to cover the, their tracks. They even tried to destroy it in a, uh, a company computer. But uh, they ultimately were able to nail him and uh, they fired him. So a few questions on that. Um, of course, if someone is trying to sabotage Tesla, it's, it's not only a fireable offense. It's also like a criminal thing. You cannot just... There's laws against sabotaging <laughs> companies. As you would uh, we don't have any words on the FBI or the local authorities uh, arresting that person. So, I'll, I just, I just, I'm trying to be as as fair as possible here, like because uh, we know that Tesla has stretched the meaning of the word sabotage before. I'm talking about past. Martin Trip here. Martin Trip, we definitely did a fireable offense of sharing information with the media and everything but i don't like these was never charged with anything he's never been criminally charged uh, as far as i know so it wasn't actual sabotage like elon claimed in the original email and everything but at the same time tesla clearly had a sabotage attempt at gigafactory uh one in nevada uh three th two or three months ago with the the, the russian thing uh with the ransomware attempt that that the fbi and tesla managed to prevent with the help of an employee that was the target of it. 
So there is definitely a sabotage threat against Tesla. But this one, I don't know if it was just, uh, we don't know what it was exactly just yet. I would wait for more than Tesla's lawyers, what they say. I would wait for uh, the other, your local authorities pressing charges or something like that. But uh, still, I think it's important to keep that in mind. Might be a threat against Tesla right now in terms of sabotage. Oh, the snake robot, the robot snake charger is not dead, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that's going to be for the longtime fans of Tesla because that thing was unveiled uh, five years ago now. Whoop, what happened with it? It just fell loading. I think My whole yeah. energy. that's a bummer. I wanted to see the, the snake Any charger. Pressure. That's what I'm doing. Uh, so that thing that was unveiled five years ago was unveiled around the same time as the autopilot. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the idea was when Tesla unveiled autopilot, they start to unveil their vision for leading to self-driving and having a full self-driving fleet that just picks you up anywhere and drops you down and you can summon the car from across the country. That, that was what Elon was saying back then and still saying today. And if you have a car self-driving without a driver or even without passengers at times you need a way to charge those cars without a driver intervention uh, and this the solution was this um this like metal snake charger that would detect a car is here to charge open the charge part automatically which uh all tesla vehicles can already do and then bloop, plug it in automatically that was five years ago. Never heard a thing about it since until now, where uh, someone on Twitter asked Elon about um, if, hypothetically, the new update would lead to be able to summon the car across states. So I don't know what he said across states, but probably like meaning like longer distances. And Elon responded to that yes, provided that we do our Metal Gear Snake auto. Cobbler, Metal Gear. That's the video game, though. That's not like that's not, that. Was yeah. there a yeah? It's like a reference to because it's a metal snake again. But anyway, uh, then someone follow up to clarify. So we we see uh, again the uh, automatic snake charger, and Elon responded yes. So it looks like this project is not dead. Uh, we but over the last five years since it was unveiled, it was never deployed, and we do know that Tesla has. Uh, uh, I cannot open. Uh, I thought you could see, you could see that, but uh, Tesla between uh, now and when the um, uh, Snake Charger was on VL, they did work into other solutions for automated charging. Uh, uh, there was a patent that they filed back in 2017 where they wanted a charger that's embedded then into the ground, in the ground as as a in, a in a charging stall, so that you could back up your car on it automatically and then the charger will come up and connect to uh, the car from the bottom but that offers its own challenges mainly having a, a charge connector at the bottom of the car so but you can see Tesla is really looking into a solution for automated charging for the self-driving future the Volvo XC40 recharge and the Polestar 2 got their official EPA uh, range rating this week no no big surprises here uh the volvo xc40 is getting a range of 208 208 miles and the pole star 2 233 miles actually the pole star 2 is kind of a, a tiny bit of a surprise because uh we we thought it might be a little bit lower than that potentially yeah it's got big wheels uh big ground clearance it's, uh but it is kind of a smaller car than you initially think um, yeah i did have a chance last week to check it check out the pole star too uh, very nice car good looking for sure uh so those two cars are actually they use the same battery pack really the uh, 78 hours 78 kilowatt hours battery pack so but of course the xc40 is the biggest bigger form factor also higher up it's more or less suv size crossover size uh so it does get a, a shorter range on the same energy capacity you, you can shorter. Yeah, you can see the efficiency here, 79 uh, MPG versus 92 for the Polestar, too. So it's not on the efficient side for an electric car, for sure, but still get to that do, do 200 miles of range, um, which 
mo is good for for most people but uh of course the comparison comes to the model y especially for the xc40 i think it's probably one of the closest competitor i think i think volvo tesla are in a similar premium segment and the cars are similar in size uh, and tesla get 121 mpg 316 miles of range on roughly the same size battery pack really crazy M maybe a little bit bigger 79 80 kilowatt hour so yeah tesla is still the efficiency king by a decent margin i mean over 100 miles extra yeah. than the volvo yeah yeah the same yeah. battery pack yep uh mercedes-benz has a, an interesting uh launch this week they kind of uh laid out a little bit more their their, their strategy for electric vehicles or their near-term vehicle electric vehicle programs that they're going to uh, launch and they unveil three um three more cars the eqe eqe suv and eqs suv um the eqs of course we know is already coming soon is the sedan version uh, it's like their s class segment electric but now we know that they're gonna have an suv version of that too and they have the eqe which is a smaller car with the eqe suv too uh the on the electric uh, video with uh, the prototypes uh, driving around well that that's the eqs uh, vision so that's a concept vehicle don't expect that production version to be a anywhere as cool but still uh, apparently i've been hearing some cool things coming up with the eqs too so just not as crazy as the as the prototype uh and the prototype that they unveiled uh this week they're all heavily camouflage or nothing nothing much to see here but daimler daimler uh has a decent i think decent enough uh electric roadmap i would i, I think I still in the German automakers that still put more weight for Volkswagen. I think they are a little bit more aggressive in it, especially with battery production and things like that. I think they they, they have a stronger plan, but I, I think Daimler is coming up pretty quick. It's just they're like maybe like a year behind Volkswagen and, and starting at the end of this year and then going on. I think you're going to see a lot of things coming out too. Um, but of course, Daimler is more higher hand stuff, more like a hobby competitor for Volkswagen. But yeah, some cool stuff coming up. I, I'm really looking forward to test out the EQS. I like the EQC and the EQS. Apparently, it's a new architecture and, and more stuff coming up. So uh, it, it's going to be a, a, a more full fledged SUV than the uh, not SUV, but any, any EV. Sorry, than what we experienced with the EQC, which I think I still think was a good car. Um, but the uh, Audi e-tron was a little bit earlier to market, and I think it hurt the EQC a little bit. All right. So do we have some question we want to go through? Yeah. So uh, first question, Sean Goggin asks, when, oh, when, where will, what model Y real will drive be? Uh, I think Elon shut that down, right? Yeah. I think he cancel it officially. Cancel it. Uh, so now we're more waiting for the um, sm smaller range uh, all wheel drive. Is that it? No. Oh wait, maybe he canceled the all small yeah. range all wheel drive. Yeah, it's that no, yes, yeah, so, so yeah, that's it. So the long range rear wheel drive that's coming and the short range was canceled. Uh you, I mean you would think soon, right? Uh but I don't know, like they, 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 I don't think they are really rushing to it. The uh, same thing with the seven seater, it's supposed to be coming now pretty much, and we haven't hear of it. I think as long as they have enough order for the rest, uh for, for the other versions, I think they're gonna go with that. They yeah, it would be know. a weird time to release a two-wheel drive version, like right before winter. Yeah. But that said, they need they do need to uh, get to five hundred thousand, or they want yeah. to get there. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the Model Three heat pump Aqua valve. Yeah. Uh, I wonder what double plane glass will do to emergency glass breaking situation. So that's a pretty good question, I guess. Yeah. Uh, oh. Another rear-wheel drive question. Um, yeah, what about the Model Y for the refresh? That's a good question. I mean, um, the center console would, would make sense to be updated too. Yeah. Uh, but the ball pane glass would make sense too. 
uh, but uh, that's about it though because the rest uh, I mean well why already has it already has the chrome delete already has the powered throng gate already has the heat pump already has the octavolve so yeah all right uh, Tesla should get into retrofits uh, I don't know if they need to do that they could get a aftermarket company to do it I feel like that's not something that they're gonna spend a lot of time on I mean, they could make some money out of it, I guess, but I don't know. I mean, at one point, Tesla was like, they weren't looking into that at all. And then Elon seemed more receptive about allowing retrofits and everything. But uh, I don't see that happening, to be honest. I don't think they have the bandwidth. Uh, Eric Williams says, uh, why are Tesla's leases really low cost? The cars hold their value well. So the residual value calculation should, be, in theory, make it very inexpensive. That's a good point. Um, and, you know, Tesla should put its money where its uh, mouth is about, I mean, theoretically, it's a, uh, a uh, asset that's increasing in value. So the lease should be negative, you know, <laughs> but in reality, uh, yeah. that's probably not the case. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a fair, because uh, uh, they even said that they want to keep all, they, they want to put to, on market all the car that he leases, right? When when he first started the leases on the Model 3, or was it the Model 3 or Model what? On the Model 3? Yeah, it was last year, right? Elon yeah. launched the leases on Model 3, and he said, we won't sell them back after we get them. We're just going to use them for Tesla network. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah. Don't know if that's true. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing your experience from the solar roof status. These issues, including travel supercharger congestion, really need to re be reported on. Uh, no CCS combo adapter this year is a big miss. Yeah, this this one is really it goes way over my head. Like it's right there. Just just do it. I yeah, I mean they do it in Europe. Maybe they just yeah. didn't, didn't make enough. I guess. Um, let's see. I'd love to see a North American CCS adapter as an alternative to the mm -hmm. Chatmo one. I wonder how hard it is to to make one from Europe work in the U.S. I wonder if it's just like a, a different fit, or if there's different. I mean, it's you know DC to DC. It's not like a, an AC adapter using a different frequency. Yeah, but you you need to change the type two plug to the. Yeah, and I'm sure the handshake is different. Mm -hmm. There's probably a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, did the Plaid S, the one uh, minute, 30 second Laguna Seca one, have 48, 60 cells? And how different was it from the 2019 Plaid? I don't think we know, do we? But I, I think, like, it, to me, it's confirmed because the way they announced the Plaid was at, at the, the, at the yeah. unveiling. It was like, what does these new cells uh, enable? And then they were like, it enables a twenty-five thousand dollar car and these kind of performance. Then they unveil the, the Mollus Plaid. So I have to assume that's what the that it's in there. Yeah. All right, uh, Google Ponzi PR departments are there to cover the company's uh, butt and to make the company look good in the view of the public, not necessarily tell the truth. That's a good point. Well, that's for that's for sure. We I know for a fact that I, I've been lied to by the PR department at Tesla in the past. That's that's for sure. Um, now. Generally speaking, you don't get lied to yeah. like by it's, PR departments. Um, you get like no no comment. no comment, or you get like you know, be, you know, going around the question like a yeah. like the vice presidential debates. Like you ask them one question and they give you a totally different answer. To, oh boy, that so. was a record. I think Mike Pence is good <laughs> at that. Jeez, I think he answered like. I know. Question. Maybe he'll be in PR after. Uh, yeah, they get voted out of office. Well, I mean, well, that, that that's a PR thing, but it's a politician thing too. Like a lot right. of politicians are good at that. They just they want to say what they want to say. They don't they don't care. It's so insulting to me. <laughs> like I know. if I'm like be asking you a question and you told it remotely and it, I'm like I get mad. <laughs> right. So in the same way, we also get mad as reporters when we're asking right. a question and they give us an answer that's totally yeah. off the wall or that we know that's a lie. Yeah, or that we ask them a question and then another publication gets the answer to our question. Yeah, that's all those things we don't like. Anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, any updates on the Model Y long range R wheel drive? Wow, everybody wants to know about that thing. 
I, I think a lot of people are waiting for it. I mean, yeah. uh, Model Y is not exactly cheap. Uh, if you get a little bit cheaper, uh, and not not everyone needs all wheel drive too. Like, uh, yeah, in California, unless like you go skiing a lot in the mountains and everything like that. I, even then, even here, like um, in Quebec, you get a ton of snow. My Model S, I rarely had any issue with the the snow. No, my yeah. parents have it, and my parents have a little bit more issues. But they have they have this nonsensical driveway that goes super up, and it's uh, with rocks and not pavement too. So like, it's not it's, it's not the average situation. But if you're driving in the city, even if there's snow, well, rear wheel drive is good too. All right. Any news with the Tesla Semi? It's time to bring it to volume production. Yeah, that's and, what he wants. Uh, then in August, I think. And so, Ni Nikola is looking less and less like a threat, I would say. Oh, boy. Yeah. Right. Apparently, GM submitted a new deal with them. They, like, revised the deal. They still want the deal. But apparently, the deal would might be, like, almost like a takeover from GM, which is still dumb. You don't right. need, need – there's, there's nothing they, that you want from them. Like, dra drawing of a badger. Yeah. So we do we think the Model S will have a refresh soon? I think it needs needs more than the three. Um, I mean, it's I a low volume car, but it, it does it. It's tired. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of things about the three that are better than the Model S, uh, charging times, for instance. Um, yeah, and now I'm confused because I I don't see it happening until uh, late 2021, whenever they deliver the Model S Plaid, because it, it, like not a lot of people will be like if you want the Plaid. And this is already taking orders for the plaid. Uh, it's not like they do the change in in in. Um, let's say they do the change in early 2021, and then you're you're like, all right, but I want new interior for sure. But then I want also the plaid. So timing is not great for that. But Tesla has been known to uh, release it whenever uh, it's ready. So, all right, when will the refresh come to California? Uh, we have a feeling that it's coming very very soon. Yeah, apparently it's it's rolling off the line right now with the changes, but you know, so it's a transitional period, so it's a little bit messy sometimes. So, like I said, it could be sending the batches to certain market first, so I have like all the same cars in the same market. So I don't know; it's, it should be very soon. A uh, question regarding the Waymo public rollout of self-driving car service: Will we be test riding it and reporting on the user experience? Unfortunately, we don't really have anybody in Phoenix, Arizona, yeah. so. Uh, no, we're not going to probably have anybody to report on it. If they do something in New York, I'll do it. <laughs> well, that, that's the whole point with Waymo, though. It's uh, they need they need to work a market for a long time before they can launch in it. Right. Uh, why do you? So this is asking why do you think the structural battery pack will increase the insurance cost because repairing will be harder. Um, so we're we're having a conversation here, and I think we're pretty close to the end. Yeah, that's um, it. Let's see. If robo taxi is not affect when the lease starts rolling in, I wonder how holding all the taxi inventory will affect their bottom line or the sell. They won't. They won't. <laughs> Believe me, like if if the timing is not good, they will sell those cars. Like they, they will make Elon a liar before they hold <laughs> thousands of cars uh, on their bottom line. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. So that's about it. Yeah, it's not like anyone's gonna hold Elon to, to those words back in 2019. That was they, they would have, a lifetime ago. They would have held him a long time ago. Yeah, they will held him for okay. something else too, like, like the timing of those robo taxis too. Right. Anyway, that's it for the show, everyone. Uh, thanks a lot for listening. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. That's always appreciated. Oh, if you're listening on your podcast app. Uh, you can give us a review. It's always helpful. People on Facebook. On, are we live on Twitter? We're not live on Twitter, are we? Yeah, Periscope. Oh, yeah, Periscope too. Like, Give us a follow on Twitter, a follow on Facebook, and uh, we're going to see you same place, same time next week. Have a good one.